Hello my lovelies and welcome back. Today it's about new promising makeup from Sephora. Got a big box, let's get into it. This is by Peace Out and this is their Instant Pore Perfector. $28. It's a lightweight silicone free pore perfector that blurs the look of pores and reduces visible redness while helping to improve the look of skin texture over time. I think that's awesome. It has hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and then some kind of mushroom extract. As always, when I test a new primer, I like to test on my forehead and then half of my face instead of the full face because I want to see if it really does make a difference. And it's kind of, it's a very thick texture. Look at that. Honestly, it looks like a putty. And it looks like it's pigmented, but it's not. So I'm looking at my pores and my face on my left side, and it does look a little bit more smooth and airbrushed, but it's not completely a mattifying pore filling type of a primer, which I actually really like. But this side does look a little bit more smooth and a little bit more even. Let's move on to foundation. This I am really, really, really looking forward to is the new Patrick Ta the face foundation. So it's a duo that includes a blendable medium coverage cream foundation that's paired with a satin finish powder. Medium coverage, and it's saying it's best for oily combo slash normal skin. And I also picked up the new brush that goes with the foundation. The brush is $45. Okay, I'm gonna swatch this and see the, cons oh wow, that is super creamy, oh my. Wow, that's creamy. I wanna blend it out, see what it feels like. If it's gonna blend into like a cream to a powder finish. It's blending out really nice. And it kind of does have that powdery, velvety finish afterwards, but I'm really, really intrigued by this. Okay, I'm gonna take the foundation side. Ooh, okay, pick it up on the brush side. We're gonna go on the no primer side first. Oh wow. The brush is actually really nice and that color might be actually a really good match. I'm just gonna start buffing this in. The brush is extremely soft, has a nice density to it, but it's not, it's not super stiff. Oh wow, that was, that was a very nice blend. <laughs> I feel like I didn't really have to work at it, kind of just did it for me. Wow, oh my goodness, hold up. What is that finish? That is beautiful, oh my goodness. It looks like it's mimicking the skincare underneath. Wow, that is pretty on the skin. I'm just impressed with the blendability of this product. Okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna build it up and work on this side with the primer. I'm kind of in love. What is it called? Love at first sight? Yeah, I am. I love at first sight as of right now. The application, the blendability, the way it looks on the skin, I will say I actually like it without the primer. On the primer side, it seems like it's kind of sticking to the primer. On this side, it looks so skin-like and the finish, it's my skin, but better. It's not sticking to anything, it's not exaggerating anything, and the way it feels on the skin, it feels very weightless. It feels like a very soft, uh, velvety, silky finish. It's incredible. We're gonna skip the powder for now just because I do have some other products, cream products that I wanna play with first and then we will use the powder to kind of set the entire face. <gasps> So excited for this. I am so excited for this. Okay, let's move on to some new brow products by Lawless. First, we have their Shape Up Soft Fill Brow Pencil. And I picked up shade Oak, and this retails for 21 US dollars, which I am really happy about the price point, actually. I feel like a lot of brow products that are coming out lately, they're like high 20s, almost $30. But this I'm intrigued. And the only thing I'm kind of concerned about is the actual pencil, the shape. It's like a very um, kind of wide oblong shape, but hopefully, oh man, that's creamy and so pigmented. Oh my, that is creamy. Wow, that's creamy. I'm hoping that I can create hair like strokes with this. It's supposed to have soft and hard waxes that create the perfect glide and skin adhesion, resulting in the perfect brow with just a few strokes. Noise. Also, love at first sight. 
This is a very creamy, pigmented, uh, waxy type of a brow pencil that's retractable, but very, very blendable, very creamy. The only thing is it gonna last all day long. To set my brows, I picked up their brow wax, also by Lawless, their Hold Up Soft Set Creamy Brow Wax. $21 as well. A clean and easy to apply creamy brow wax that delivers fuller looking brows with a strong but flexible hold and a hint of tint that lasts all day long. Okay, it's not super, super wet, but it's also not tacky. It's kind of reminding me of the Rose Ink but with a little bit of a tint. Okay, I like this. I like these two paired together so far. This is not technically a brand new product, but it is a newer product for me and for RMS. So this is their cream eyeshadow, 26 US dollars. I have shade Strobe, which is a champagne mink color. It looks really, really beautiful. It's supposed to be a long wear, crease proof cream eyeshadow that's supposed to be nourishing has a metallic finish, and they're supposed to be also buildable shades. I read in the back of the box that you're supposed to work pretty quick with it, starting from the uh, center of your eyes and kind of blending outward, and they do set very fast, so working one eye at a time. And it comes with this little um, metal thing to help squeeze the product out. I love the packaging, it kind of looks like a mini toothpaste. All right, I'm gonna pack this onto a little brush first. I'm using the Sephora Pro Shadow Number 15 brush. I love these one and done type of eyeshadows. This is the Sigma E25, and just gently blend this out right before it sets. Again, I have no uh, eyeshadow base underneath as well, because I'm really curious how this is going to wear. I love how wet that looks. For eyeliner, Milk Makeup came out with a new one. This is their Infinity Long Lasting Waterproof Eyeliner Pencil. $22. Again, loving these price points. This right here, it's a creamy twist up waterproof eyeliner pencil that glides on smoothly for intense color that won't budge for up to 12 hours. It also comes with a detachable sharpener, which is nice. And you also like a little smoker, um, like a rubber based uh, pencil at the very end as well with a little cap and then it is retractable. Oh yeah, that is super creamy. It's a very matte black color, but it's not super, super black. It looks very wearable, so I'm excited. Just using the other side, the little smudger. I'm just trying to kind of smoke it out just a little bit right here. Okay, so it does smudge out to a point, but then it kind of starts flaking. So I just want to show you guys that it does flake, but I'm going to clean it up using a cotton round, cotton pad with uh, just some micellar water. We are ready for concealer. We have a new one. Actually, no, mascara. I almost forgot mascara. Right here. It's by Guerlain. This is their Noir G Volumizing and Curling. Ooh, it's waterproof. Waterproof mascara. Oh boy. I didn't know it was waterproof. I'm not the biggest fan of waterproof mascaras because they're a pain to take off. It's a long wearing, visibly volumizing and curling mascara that is inspired by the flutter of butterfly wings. And it's 38 US dollars. Oh, wow, it's heavily fragranced. My goodness. Mm -hmm. A nice dark formula. Looks like it's Pretty nice wispy lashes. Okay, I like that for one coat. It's very wispy, very natural looking. They don't look clumped. They don't look extremely long. They don't look very um, defined. They look very fluttery, which kind of explains, I mean, kind of does what it explains or it claims to do. I just don't know why it's so fragranced. Hope it's not going to irritate my eyes. So concealer, we have a new one by Too Faced. This is their Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating Smoothing Concealer, $26. I picked up shade Oatmeal, which is fair with rosy undertones. And this is supposed to be a buttery serum light buildable concealer that effortlessly glides on skin to camouflage and cover imperfections for up to 24 hours. So medium coverage, natural finish, with also kind of like illuminating properties. For a cream bronzer, and I, and I think it's a cream highlighter. This is by Beauty Blender, and this is their Bounce Magic Fit Creamy Bronzer and Highlighter Duo, $32. And I picked up shade, I think it's light. It's called Champagne and Topaz, or Topaz. But this is a gel cream highlighter with a velvety matte pH adjusting bronzer, 
Ooh, to effortlessly sculpt your face and visibly amplify your glow. I'm gonna take my trusty F1 by Makeup by Mario. Let me swatch this actually. Oh my goodness, that is very uh, balmy. In what? It kind of just disappeared. Oh my, what is that? But it blends into like a, like they say, a velvety matte finish. They say you use a sponge but I wanted to see how a brush would work and it's working out incredible. It kind of looks like it's gonna leave like spots, but you kind of don't have to do anything after that. I just tap over it or buff and it blends out so nice. I'm gonna take a dampened sponge now. The damp beauty blender. Okay, I can see why they say use a damp beauty blender because it just, it's not as scary looking from the beginning because with the brush, at first, it looked like it was gonna be patchy and just a hot mess. And then it just blended into this beautiful airbrushed looking, I don't know what this is, like a sculpt to bronzer all in one. But with the dampened sponge, it kind of takes that scary factor away. Look at how easy that is to blend. And yes, I like it better with the sponge because it's just so easy. So for blush, we have this one by Melt Cosmetics. It's not new, but this color is new to their collection, to their natural finish collection in shade Pink Sand. How pretty is that? It's a nice corally peach pink. So it's a cream blush formula in a natural and pearl textures that gives your cheeks a natural glowy finish. This is heavily scented. It's kind of like a vanilla, Vanilla something. It's not bad, but it is very heavily scented. Wow. Let me swatch this. Very creamy. Let's see how pigmented this is. It has a very balmy texture as well. Very slick. I wanna blend this out. And again, blends it to kind of nothing. Hopefully it layers. I'm kind of build that into my brush. Okay, it looks like it's applying something. It looks very, honestly, very, very natural on the cheeks. And this is by Rose and Ben, their C41 blush brush, one of my favorite brushes at the moment. Works well with cream, powder, different types of finishes. It's a great blush brush. Wow, this is actually a really beautiful formula. Again, very easy to use, almost foolproof. And the finish is really beautiful. It's not exaggerating any of my fine lines. It's not exaggerating the texture of my skin, my pores. It just looks very natural, very soft, nice and glowy and healthy, but there's no shimmer or glitter that's visible on the cheeks. Um, let me quickly finish the eyes. Actually, no, let me set the face before I move on. I'm gonna set the face using the Patrick Ta and the other side of the brush. It's very soft powder. It's not super mattifying. It still has that shine peeking from within, that glow, not the shine, the glow. It doesn't even look like that powder on my face. It doesn't look dry, it doesn't look heavy. I'm noticing one thing about the eyebrows, that brow wax is not really holding up my brows the way they describe or the way I ex expected it to hold. Finish off the eyes, I'm gonna take a little bit more of the eyeshadow. I'm gonna work that on the lower lash line and then finish off with um, mascara. Stick a little bit of this highlighter. He said it's kind of like a gel, what do they say? A gel cream highlighter. But that's actually really pretty. Oh, that's actually really pretty. I'm just gonna work it onto the sponge. Just do it like right here. Wow, that's a very, oh my, okay. It's very wet, but honestly it looks so pretty. It looks gorgeous with this blush. I'm gonna work it right into the inner corner. Actually, maybe use a brush with this. It's a very not in your face type of a highlighter, but it packs a punch and it's not shimmery or glittery looking also. For lip liner, Bare Minerals, their mineralist lasting lip liner, 19 US dollars. I picked up shade Blissful Blush, which is a warm pink. It's like they said, a richly pigmented, creamy lip pencil that glides on easily to extend lip color wear while resisting feathering and bleeding. The only thing I will say it's making me nervous is because this formula is so creamy, it looks like it's breaking very easily, so. Yep, there it goes. It's no mistake and this is creamy. One of the closest match to my natural lip color that I've found in a long time. Last but not least for the lipstick is by NARS. This is their Power Matte Long Lasting Lipstick, $34. And I am obsessed with this packaging. I love how slim, how square, how minimal 
very like modern. I love this packaging. And this shade right here is uh, Sweet Disposition. It's a pink beige. That's the color. Woo, that is pretty. Um, it's a transfer resistant matte lipstick that glides on delivering bold color with all day comfort for up to 10 hours. They're not saying that you should wait a couple minutes to reapply or anything like that, but I'm, I'm excited for, for this makeup because I like most of the products so far. I'm not the biggest fan of um, the eyebrow wax. I actually applied some of my Benefit 24 hour gel on top of that wax just because the wax was just weighing my uh, my hair My eyebrows down, but as of right now everything looks very promising I'm just obsessed with the way my skin is looking and it looks beautiful in person and in the mirror like really close up I just the skin looks so pretty. I'll keep you guys updated Okie dokie. So I didn't do an update like throughout the day, but this is my first official update. But I did take a quick video at <laughs> the trampoline park. We had my nephew's fifth birthday birthday party there. So it was kind of a, like a busy day. It was very hot, very muggy today, very kind of overcast, rainy, and yeah. Pretty happy with the way my makeup is looking. I am very, very, very excited about this base makeup because I like the way my skin is looking at the end of the day. I looked closer at my skin right before filming and I'm seeing that I have a little bit of dry spots like right here and right here. Kind of basically where I layered the makeup a little bit more and powdered a little heavier. I like both sides. But I think the primer side did a really good job. I still see a little bit more makeup on this side versus this side. I'm noticing the mascara is transferring actually quite a bit to the lower lash line, even though it is a waterproof formula. And another thing, my lashes dropped after curling them the second time, which usually never happens, especially for the price tag, not impressed. Moving on to eyeshadow eyeliner. Eyeliner doesn't look like it has budged. I will say it's not my favorite formula to work with. I kind of had a hard time blending it out and smoking it out. It kind of flaked on me quite a bit, but I like that it hasn't budged, it hasn't creased. It just stayed put as the way I applied it. So pretty impressed with the longevity. Now the real star of the show for my eyes is the eyeshadow. I see zero creasing, I see zero cracking, zero flaking. Moving on to the eyebrows, eyebrows are still there. I do like the color. I think this eyebrow pencil, because it's so creamy and so pigmented, you can go heavy handed or you can go pretty lightweight and just blend it out and kind of blur it out. I do like that. I don't like the brow wax. I don't think it has enough hold, especially for my brow hairs where they're stubborn. I need something like the Refi, the Patrick Ta, the 24 hour brow gel, something to really hold them up in place. Moving on to the bronzer, I still see it. I kind of feel like I still see, I see a little bit more on this side with the primer. And then the blush, I think I kind of see it more on the primer side as well. I think it kind of disappeared on me. I don't know where it, where it went. <laughs> But the highlighter is still there and the highlighter, highlighter actually looks really pretty in the inner corner still. It hasn't done anything weird mixed with the concealer or the eyeshadow. It's still really beautiful and it still looks really nice on the, on the high points of my cheeks right here. This concealer, it's a very radiant finish. It's not my favorite concealer. I don't think I'm going to be reaching for it in comparison to like my Dominique Cosmetics my Morphe concealers, my NARS concealer, my Huda Beauty, my Kosas. I mean, I just have my plethora of concealers that I'm using right now. And this one just kind of is not meeting the standard for what I'm looking for. Lip liner is still there on the outer portions, but I'm pretty disappointed that most of my lipstick has kind of disappeared after I ate. I think the formula is really nice. It's really comfortable for a matte lipstick and I'm excited for the for some of the other shades. But as of right now, it's not transfer resistant. It's not budge proof in comparison to the Dior lipstick. The Dior lipstick is just mm, chef's kiss. But very excited and yeah, very excited. I think I found some of my favorites in this video that I'm gonna keep wearing over and over again. Eyeshadow, 
That bronzer is beautiful with the highlighter, stunning bronzer. Obviously, obviously the foundation with the powder. I really like that primer. I'm gonna keep wearing it and kind of test it out in comparison to my Shiseido. I love my Shiseido primer. The lip liners, really, really, really like the lip liners. I like that blush. I'm just kind of worried that I'm not seeing as much of it on my face, maybe just because I didn't go as heavy handed as I usually do, but yeah, I think we found some treasures in this makeup haul. I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you for watching, spending time with me, and I'll see you the next one very soon. Bye. I had to show you guys, I'm doing my first cleanse using the That I Met You cleanser. And uh, maybe that's why the mascara was transferring and smudging all over the place on the lower lash line. It's maybe like a long wearing mascara because it's not acting like a waterproof mascara. I'm gonna have to keep wearing this mascara because I was not looking forward to taking this off, but are you seeing this? I'm happy that it's not being rough on my lashes when I'm removing it. All right, there you go. Just wanted to show you guys. <laughs>